You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. In a world where knowledge is king, two men will strive to... <coughs> oh, sorry about that. We're 100 Things We Learned From Film, the podcast that takes a different subject movie each week and tries to learn 100 things. Hence the funny title. I'm Mark. And I'm John. And my favourite thing I've learned so far is that chickens have pea crystals. What's yours? <laughs> Quite. Do you know the mosquito in the original Jurassic Park is the only type of mosquito that doesn't actually suck blood? So in this case, no blood, no dinosaurs, no film. So that's us, 100 Things We've Learned From Film. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts every Monday. Yeah. Fair, but I am not up for drinking at 9 a.m. unless it's a mimosa. I mean, I am. And we am. can't do... I don't think there's a time on when you can drink. <laughs> My what, taste what, buds it just, just don't always, appreciate it. Just everyday mimosas. The Love of Page, <laughs> like Love of Pages podcast. The book with the mimosa. Welcome back for another shift on the Geeks Watch. This week we are here and we're talking about the third episode of Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Uh, we missed out on Steven's thoughts on the first and second episode last week, but we will get to that after we talk about our Geeks Watch. But Steven first gets to introduce everybody. What's up, everybody? I'm joined by my friends. I am Steven, the Peppermint Gentleman. Uh, here, in no particular order, is the, the man himself, John. Hey, yo. The, the United States of Women's, Jess and Elizabeth. Hi. And the man himself, the CEO, the champion, the creator of this whole here network, Mitch. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to do this like that boxing announcer next time. <laughs> and you gotta have I like should, the, the, yeah. I should probably plan these a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not as much fun. <laughs> but as for really <laughs> as sorry, go ahead, John. Oh uh, no, that's right. That's gonna be a stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> but as always, first we're gonna get into our week's watch. So Elizabeth, what did you watch this week? So my week's watch occurred a couple weeks ago, but we, I didn't get a chance to talk about it because I was too interested in talking about the Jungle Cruise. But um, <laughs> we went and saw Snake Eyes, the G.I. Joe movie. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Question mark. Um, like, I had- because you don't know if it's a G.I. Joe movie or you didn't know that it was a G.I. Joe movie. Like, wh- where's the question mark coming at? All of the above. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, my brain said, Mitch said it was a G.I. Joe movie. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if my brain remembered that correctly. (laughs) I have never seen any of the G.I. Joes. So I have, other than knowing that they were action figures that my brother enjoyed as a child, I had no idea what this was about. I mean, Um, I I would say it's G.I. Joe in name only. Oh, okay. Mm, Fair enough. I did not care for it. Um, it, Which which is hard because, like, I feel like I'm a pretty simple movie goer. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just a simple bird lawyer from down south. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, but like, I didn't come in with any expectations other than I knew it was going to be an action movie with ninjas. That's as far as I got from the trailer. Mm. Um, I just, it's... I didn't think the hero's journey was enough of a hero's journey. Mm. It was the story kind of was crappy, which doesn't happen very often. Like normally, you know, so long as there's a beginning, middle and end, you've got a climax. Like I'm usually pretty good, but yeah, no, it was, it was really kind of boring. Wow. For the character's journey in this one. 
mm-hmm. the, the the characters they're like the hero's journey, the hero's arc of things in Jungle Cruise. It's serviceable. It is there. It is nothing more than that, really. How does yeah. this compare to that? This to me isn't serviceable. Ooh. Oh. Because for me, the hero's journey, the big piece is where the hero sacrifices their own self-interest for the greater good. Mm -hmm. And in this one, it was just, oh, now my self-interest aligns with the greater good. So I'll be the hero. And not even in like a like a fun anti-hero kind of way. He's not he's not Han Solo. No. Hmm. I mean, he pulls a Han Solo at the end. Yes, but it's yeah, no, it's just. It's, you know, I'm here to avenge my father's death. Screw the greater good. Oh, wait. Father's death and the greater good are connected. I guess I'm going after the same bad guy now. Oh, okay. And it's like, that doesn't, that doesn't make you a good guy. <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't make the right choice. The right choice kind of just fell into your lap. And like, but, that's not helpful. I mean, and I'm but. defending this movie and I did not care for it either. But <laughs> he hated it as well. Uh. I mean, he makes a decision and it, it does, he, it, it, he makes the decision to be the better person. Like he has the opportunity to kill the person that he's, Going, not spoilers, I guess, to go kill the person that he's been searching for his whole life and he decides not to. He decides to help the people that he considers friends instead. Only because the guy he was meant to kill was like, well, I got the orders from the bad guys that your friends are trying to fight. I mean, I guess that depends on... <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, so, but this is literally the guy who killed his father. To me, that it's still like, oh, yes... The bad guys are, in fact, also my bad guys. Interesting. In in this situation, you're basically seeing like those those stories that we get told about history, where this person did this thing, and that's why the good cause was able to make it through. Yeah. But you're, you're seeing the non revisionist history, where they're not like, <laughs> yeah, they were always with them all along, and they went and joined the cause so they could take down the big bad. Yeah. yeah. So I was just like, I was like, oh, you didn't earn the hero's arc. Like, you just, you Mm. didn't earn it. Did they explain how we got the name Snake Eyes in this? Yes, they did. And and a terrible idea. It's a terrible, (laughs) terrible reason. Why do they always do that in all of the prequel (laughs) or like journey, like the making of kind of things? The Han Solo line? (laughs) No. It's because it's in the script writing handbook 101. (laughs) (laughs) You must answer this question. (laughs) We gotta answer so the questions bad. that people have. Why is his name Han Solo? Uh, I mean, an imperial <laughs> officer gave it to him. <laughs> she, do you really, do you want to go ask Larry Hama why he named the character Snake Eyes in the first place? I'm probably I'm sure it's just like, oh, I thought snakes were cool. Like, one hundred percent Snake Eyes. Like, <laughs> cool, it's cool to say. Like, come on, it's a great name. I like. I like the Masters of the Universe way of naming characters, where you just come up with like a do- a dopey name and then make a character design to fit it. It was in um uh, in Futurama. Yeah. Well, yeah, in, anything like um in in Futurama they had their character. I think they were parodying kind of the GI Joe kind of thing, uh-huh. and they all jump out of they're like jumping out of a helicopter or a plane or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is Futurama. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I have no idea. Rings a bell. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they like jump out of a plane, and he has um he has like a gun that makes fire and a gun that makes cold, and he jumps out and he's like freezer burn. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't recognize that, Futurama. but I feel like that would be Futurama. What probably it, it just- what probably occurred was he had just been accumulating a list of names and he had created a character and he just went down the list and he's like, Yeah, that one sounds good. No, no, you <laughs> just go into one of those little name building fantasy <laughs> things and go click random. Boop, 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 snake eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Next to like blood fang. And <laughs> <laughs> so as much as this is a snake eyes origin, it's also a storm shadow origin. So, Ooh, storm uh, shadow. That yeah. was like the third one down on that list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these all sound yeah. like image comics from the 90s. <laughs> did, it, did it at least have good female gaze? Because there's a couple nice looking actors in there. Yes, that I appreciate nice boys. gazing at. <laughs> yes, <laughs> good female gaze, and it did pass the Bechdel test. Ooh, that's surprising. Which was which was impressive. Okay, um, and unexpected. I mean, it was it was a very 
short-lived passing of the Bechdel test, but it did occur. It's really not hard, though. It's really not hard. It's to pass really it. not hard. And that's what makes it um, sad when you don't. <laughs> Yeah, like you, the the Bechtel test could be serviced by like one character being like, "Hey, can you hand me that milkshake?" <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that pretty would nice. make it pass. <laughs> yeah, um, what flavor would this, you this, like? This was this was a little bit more than that, but not much. Okay, but there was there, hmm. just a little bit more than that. Um, although, quite honestly, I liked the female characters a heck of a lot more than I liked any of the male characters. Okay, um, they were a lot more dynamic in terms of character building then i think either of the i mean they're really only two male main character well, yeah two male main characters <sighs> hmm interesting so mm. but well there you go that's snake eyes we snake saw it in eyes. theaters i assume you can stream it somewhere but i have no idea you cannot stream Felix it anywhere you can't stream that one yes yeah. it will be available on paramount <laughs> plus eventually okay mm. thanks to scarjo well, I don't understand why. The lawsuit oh, with Disney. For, for well, that that was just dumb Disney. on Disney's but part. They were, they were already going to do Paramount, oh, okay. on Paramount Plus like 45 yeah, they, days after. They probably have it contracted in the actor's contracts to be able to do streaming. <laughs> now and Disney do. was like, we just won't put it and nobody will find out. Not thinking, oh yeah, lawyers are lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins is in theaters now. Uh, Steven, what did you watch this week? I watched a lot of things this week, but I guess the thing that I'll talk about, uh, uh, sorry if I'm stepping on anyone else's toes who was going to talk about this one, but I watched the James Gunn's The New Side Squad last night. But um, night before last. Yeah. Um, no, the rest I, what, of us how, are, the, uh, I'm going to see it tonight. Mm, okay. Say three, yeah. Two of us are at least. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, uh Spoiler free review, obviously. It's very close to when this movie came out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know how else to differentiate those movies. You say The Suicide Squad instead of Suicide Squad? Like, that's Correct. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what is oh. the SS? I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> See, I can say that. that that's the thing. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> you could say James um, Gunn's Suicide Squad or David Ayer's Suicide Squad, even though David Ayer would not. Yeah, he, he does like, not claim that one. He's not going to claim that movie. Yeah. <laughs> he wants it. Off, he wants it off his IMDb. I would assume mm-hmm. so. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I watched that movie. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, I I felt like it's 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 kind of like the idea of what Elizabeth said about Snake Eyes a little bit, mm-hmm. where it's like, yeah, no, like there was an arc here, but it wasn't. It wasn't like anything was like a, a big surprise or anything. Um, I don't know. I, maybe it's it's not that it's not it's not that the hero's journey was bad or anything that people didn't have like redemption or whatever kind of things. It's that the story was just like, yep, this is what we're doing the whole time. No. Okay. Okay. Huh? Well, uh, I assume you saw it at home. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, any anything else that would have been interesting to to talk about that you can't spoil for the movie yeah mm, no 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 i, I won't <laughs> say much more than that but I, I actually I, I, as a different a different week's watch um they put well, up what, the first what, what, five. What, how was james gunn's directing like yeah. it was fine it was good compared like, to the, his other james some, gunn's movies yeah no, um it was fine as far as things go like it's it's still pretty and everything um they do some parts that are cool visually um, some parts that are super gross visually, mm. like later on, uh, like it really got me. And I'm not usually grossed out by stuff on screen. I I went mm. to some oh, specific great. corners of the internet as a kid, <clears throat> and th- there were some parts. <laughs> yeah, I heard um, it's really gory. Yeah, well, it, honestly, it wasn't even that. It so wasn't it, even the gory stuff. Does it own? Does it earn its R rating? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay. Um. For me personally, it wasn't the stuff that's that's gory or anything. It's that uh, like I, I I'm trypophobic, and there are some parts in there for this. I don't know what trypophobic. I don't know is. what trypophobic is either. Uh, you get grossed out by like clusters of holes in things. Oh, like a, like a lotus plant. Oh, oh right, right. Yeah. You mentioned that before. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it it messed me up in some parts. 
All right. That's good to know. All right. <laughs> Uh, other okay. than that, they put they put the first five episodes of the Owl House up on Disney Plus. For oh, two. oh, they did. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know I'm doing it. It's good. It's good. No, so th- those are my two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Owl House is on Disney Plus, and Suicide Squad is in theaters or on HBO Max for the next couple weeks. Get on it if you want to see it for free. Well, you already pay for HBO Max, so yeah, I don't. <laughs> Somebody does. <laughs> Jessica, what did you watch this week? So, because my parents are not ready to go back to the theaters, I we did Jungle Cruise at home on premium Disney Plus. And I can now answer that as someone who loves a ride, yes, this was the movie for the ride. They don't even need to change up the ride. All those puns that you hated, mm-hmm. all the puns from the ride. Oh, I know. Oh, uh, even my favorite, the granite one. <laughs> like, just, I was like, oh, like every time I heard one from the ride, I'm like, hey, hey, <laughs> that's my favorite. I love Jungle Cruise. It's like my favorite of the original rides. So I was excited. I liked it. I did see the chemistry. I don't know if it was because it's the difference between watching it at home or not, but what happened was when they first meet, there's that initial like, oh, hey, and it turns off for her because she's got a job to do. And for him, because of the thing that ends up being a spoiler that I won't say, but like, <laughs> but like you see it and then it's gone and then it's great. And it really was Romancing the Stone, which is like one of my favorites. <laughs> so um, like, it's like, yeah. I think I tweeted, I was like, this was literally a movie made for me. Like, and I don't care what anybody else thinks about it, but this is like my favorite movie so far. Like, well, so I'm really glad that you guys actually discussed that last week because I was talking to a coworker of mine who's of a much older generation. And she was like, I think we're ready to go back to the theaters, but I don't know if there's anything I really want to see. And I'm like, well, I really loved Jungle Cruise. I mm-hmm. thought it was great. And I, I've never seen it, but apparently if you like Romancing the Stone, you'll love it. She's like, I love that movie. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> so <laughs> that was, I was like, because I would not have made, been, reference. made that reference because I've never seen that movie. So well, we're going to fix that. Don't I know. Worry. I know. It's, but it's so I do appreciate it. You guys have helped me convince somebody else to go see Jungle Cruise. Uh, yeah. No, I, I absolutely loved it. But I love puns and I love ridiculous romance storylines and ah. just, I, I just, <laughs> and then also I had no idea there was a Metallica song in it. And I was like, this is yeah. great. I will say the my entire w- movie. I was, I was like, like, what a decision. It started and I was <laughs> like, oh my God, is this Metallica? <laughs> yeah. And it, oh, that was great. And that I, whole scene was I, great. And I, I need to it. know what Metallica song this is. I just cannot uh, imagine. It, uh, it was um, nothing, nothing else matters. matters. But it's just the guitar. Yeah, it's not sung. It's just the guitar acoustic version. Uh, Oh, and it's beautiful. (laughs) Oh, it's beautiful. You you remember that band that used to play to get real angry when you were in high school? (laughs) (laughs) Yep, they're in Disney movies now. (laughs) Metallica's in that new Romancing the Stone movie. (laughs) (laughs) It's great. It's wonderful. Um, I will say my one critique is the other music. Um, The... No, I was going to say cinematography, but the the orchestra pieces. Why can I not the say score? the score? Thank okay. you. The score of it, I think, didn't match it well enough. Like, I think it took it too over the edge. I don't know how to because, like, to me, writing wise, this is a lot like Pirates and the Mummy. You don't say. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly and the Pirates Mummy the though it is exactly that. But Pirates is really successful and really low love, but yeah. still the same kind of storyline, like still ridiculous, over the top. But the music is really good. Whereas this one, the score isn't crazy good. And it almost pushes that line of too chintzy with the amount of stuff that's going on that I feel like that's where the imbalance is between. Mm. But I don't know. That could just be me. But there's a lot of times I, I, where I was like, this is just a little bit too much brass in this section to like make it. But not that I know anything about how to score a film. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you have opinions. But I have opinions. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say it, it could have been a slightly better movie if they just scored it slightly differently. Not anything no. against the, the person who did the score, though, because I think he's done other amazing stuff. But Are you a big fan of the Pirates films? Uh, the first three, yes. The later okay. on ones, no. I feel like they messed up going on later on. But yeah, like initially, yeah, they were one of my favorite films at the time they came out. Did it seem weird for them to do what they did with the bad guys for this? No, that's after just the pirates films exist. That's just legit what they do. I don't I don't know. It's like, yeah. what's the answer to the bad guys? Ah, uh, zombies. 
<laughs> no, it, it's got to be a shared universe. That's the only explanation. Honestly, that's yeah. that's what that's all I could think the whole time. Yeah, it's it's got to be. It probably uh, yeah, is. it is. It's Disney. It so it's are we going to get a crossover universe. movie? I don't know, a crossover <laughs> movie, or it's going to continue on into no, it'll, Africa? It'll because... be like Pixar, where all the little thing there's little oh, things in the background true. that connect the movies. Like, yeah, like so, I imagine Pizza Home Planet <laughs> will have like something in there too. Yeah. Because, like, what's the answer? It's always a supernatural. And mm-hmm. everybody has different versions of supernatural. And they all exist in the same world. I do think they can do a sequel to this one. And it's going to take place in Africa. Because the first half of the Jungle Cruise uh, is on the Nile. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. So. Now, which which, which the, bad version of. Nile line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, w- which, which, um. Which bad version of naming the sequel do you think they'll go with? Do you think they'll go with Jungle Cru- Jungle's Cruise, Jungle Cruises, uh, Jungle Twos? Uh, what, what do you think? The Jungle Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be Jungle Cruise subtitle. Yeah. Jungle That's Cruise, fair. you're and, in and denial. And, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. J- Jungle Cruise, like Search for the Scepter or some crap like that. Yep. Yeah. That'll in, be in it. Denial yeah, that'll sounds be it. good. It'd be Jungle Cruise, Dead Man's Chest. <laughs> just no, gonna, no, no! It'll have to be. De- it'll have it. to be Dead Man's Dead Man's Tomb because okay. you'll have to do pyramids. So, oh, how about Jungle Cruise Two: Romancing the Rock? <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Yep. yep, Disney needs to do. That. Wasn't wasn't the, the second of Romancing the Stone Jewel the Nile? Yep. So okay. there it, it is. Was the second that? Romancing okay. the Stone? Was. There was a second Romancing the Stone. There That's is. Good. It is not, not as, as good. good, but there yeah, is a second one. So you're telling me that it's going to be Jungle Cruise, Jewel of the Nile. Yep. Or no, Jewel Stone of the Denial. Nile. <laughs> Jewel, uh, Denial. Jewel of the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> look, it, they'll just be like, look, it's pirates, romancing the stone, and the mummy all rolled into one. Just, We're not going to hide it anymore. <laughs> We're not going to hide anymore. Brendan Fraser voice is the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jungle Cruise 2, uh, Scorpion King. <laughs> <laughs> they will make reference to Scorpion King, and he'll be like, that guy's a loser. <laughs> they will just have say, the scorpion king in it yep <laughs> he, he can no just say he can just say i hate sand <laughs> and then that tie it into star wars <laughs> get all the things in there disney oh i hope God. you're listening I'm this is listening. This is great <laughs> this has been a fantastic brainstorming session oh gosh <laughs> but yeah i loved it well disney plus. there you go jungle cruise is still on disney plus yes. and still in the theaters uh, John, what did you watch this week? So <clears throat> this week was a weird one for me. So instead of watching stuff, I just kind of play things in my spare time. Mm. Um, so this was a video game week's play, I could say. Uh, I want to start off with Splatoon 2. Mm. Now, I only okay. bought this game because my daughter, I guess, watches YouTubers play this game and thought mm-hmm. it was fun. This game looks stupid to me. I remember when the first <laughs> one came out and I was like, all you do is shoot paint at things like that sounds really lame whatever and it was in the wii u which a system i didn't own it just passed me by so now that we have a switch i was like okay fine i I need to earn some good dad points so i got splatoon 2 um i started playing it and wow this game is a lot of fun (laughs) (laughs) i was was not expecting to actually really like this um the premise is basically that it's basically two teams go off against each other in like a battle map and the main goal is to cover as much of your side with your color paint as the other Mm. Uh, so the emphasis isn't really on battle you can fight the other people but you have the kind of risk reward with fighting them or covering your side while they also try to cover yours with theirs and so on Mm. Um, i feel like such an old person explaining like the concept of a game that's pretty fresh right now Um, (laughs) but this is really pretty much new to me what i wasn't expecting is the cool music and art Mm. style throughout this whole thing it just has such a fun environment that's this game. Honestly, it's 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 this generation's crazy taxi where they're never going to uh, stop talking about how much the aesthetic affected them. Yes, the aesthetic just has such an effect to make it like really just interesting to me visually. Like I can't take my eyes off of it cuz I'm always looking at the next little details. The paint is not just paint. It has like a slightly mit- uh, metallic sheen to it. Um I I said uh, real quick I said Crazy Taxi. I meant Jet Set Radio. I am so oh. sorry. <laughs> okay. They're just both yellow. They're I don't both, know what happened to my They're both break. Dreamcast games. I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, but yeah, the, this thing just has such an interesting aesthetic. Uh, the environment's really cool. Like, I'm always looking at the little details uh, in the cities and in the levels. Everything just is really cool for some reason. Like, this reminds me of like when I was growing up in the '90s, and I wanted to be so desperately on Nickelodeon's Wild and Crazy Kids. No, uh, <laughs> good show. That's that's what this reminds me of. You have like two teams of brightly colored kids just going off against each other doing these wacky tasks and it just has that aesthetic it makes me feel like i'm at the beach in san diego having like a paintball gun fight with like a bunch of other people and i love that it's surprisingly good i'm kind of sorry i'm late to the game on it apparently it's three years old now and they're already having Ah. trailers for the next one coming out sometime in february i think of next year which guess what we're gonna get because <laughs> now we now we have something we can play together for father daughter time that Aww. I probably like even more than she does now. <laughs> and to that point, so because I have been playing a lot of games now, the Nintendo Switch. Not that I want to give them free promotion, but I am officially on the second renaissance of being a fanboy again. Um, they have some really <laughs> awesome deals on the uh, the mm-hmm. Switch. Oh yeah, and I ended up buying a bunch of stuff that was like one or two dollars and. Man, like this is just like so awesome. Uh, I got a game called Cyber Protocol, hmm. which I don't remember the name of this type of game, but it's basically um, the kind of game where you have a little dot. I have this. You have this one? Yeah, I got it for one ninety nine. Also, yes, um, it, it, it's it's a like a, a maze. Yes, and the type the way that this works is that you have a little dot that can only go in one direction at a time. So you have to kind of use the environment to propel you in the right direction so that you can collect all of the little pellets or whatever it is you're supposed to collect. Oh, okay. um, there's a the name of that um, kind of puzzle, but I can't remember what it is. Back back in old, like early, um, well, early for me, Windows days, there was a game called Chips Challenge. Mm-hmm. It's a lot like Chips Challenge. I'm not familiar with mm-hmm. that one, but it probably has that same play style as this because this is not like a very radical or original kind of game, mm-hmm. but is the aesthetic it's got like this cyberpunk um, retro 80s uh, look to it. And it's got a synthwave soundtrack, which sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. And that's the main draw for me because I watched it and I was like, eh, I don't know about this. And then I heard the trailer and I was like, oh, I'm getting this for two bucks. Hell yeah. It's worth it for just <laughs> for the music alone. Um, and on that note, I also got one called Cyberhook, which is also set in like a retro wave environment with like a lot of blues and purple neons and the main point of that one is you basically like parkour through this tron like environment shooting like a grappling hook to like propel you across different parts of the stage Mm -hmm. also has a really awesome synth wave soundtrack Mm -hmm. also really fun and then the last one i got is called manifold garden that's a good game. Yeah, that one is amazing. So it's, it's, you're that that's that's LSD portal. Yes, really. <laughs> that actually is uh, inspiring my next playthrough. Um, so yeah, basically, um, you're in a 3D environment, and it looks like it's mostly black and white with like little spots of color here and there. And the, the main mechanic of the game is that you can rotate everything on its axis depending on the direction you're facing. And that helps you open up like what to do in the game. So like it's it's very I don't even know how you spatially uh, related. So like you go into a room and it looks like there's nowhere to go. You rotate the direction of the room, which in reality rotates the entire world apparently around you. Mm-hmm. And now you can see, oh, there's a door here, there's a switch over here. But to get to the switch, you need to go into that door, which means you need to rotate the world again, but this time in a different direction. And you go through that, gives you access to other parts. You know, it, It's an interesting mechanic, very disorienting the first time trying it. Yeah. Um, but once you kind of get the the, uh, the idea of it, the feel for it, it's really interesting and fun. Very frustrating in some parts because um, not my patience isn't what it used to be, but I still <laughs> it, it's still really pretty to look at regardless. Yeah, it looks really gorgeous. I, Reminds me of. Plants. I agree with. Oh yeah, absolutely. honestly, yeah, it's the same kind of like meditative kind of thing while mm-hmm. you're playing it. Yeah, um, and that one has more calm music, which I appreciate as well. <laughs> when um. 
when did you ever have the thing where you left the like one of the buildings where you were like this is i am this is not working i'm missing something and then you end up kind of falling through space to another building <laughs> did no, you I have this happen ha- i haven't had that happen yet the the game will take you and basically put you on another instance of the same building that you were on Oh. So it it's like even if you fall off, eventually everything's just lined up like a hair to the side oh, as okay. you go down. So you'll end up on another one and then you're not necessarily dying in that instance. You're just like boop. Starting okay. over. Yeah, and yeah. you can start from a different no, angle basically. I've been I've been really careful about not falling off because even in a virtual environment, like heights give me the jitters. <laughs> so like I'm always really careful not to go too close to the edges on certain things. But I I'm sure that's gonna happen at some point. I'm not paying attention. I'll go <laughs> in through like a window that I couldn't see and I'll just be right back where I started. But, Nintendo's yeah. doing been doing a really good job this generation. I think Nintendo and Xbox both are kind of kicking PlayStation's ass oh. as far as like the indies and stuff they have. Mm. Even though like as a person who owns a PlayStation and plays games predominantly on that still, um I just I buy more on the Switch <clears throat> because of those like 199 sales and stuff. Mm. And then all of the indies that I've wanted have been on Xbox and play and uh, um PC. Mm. Hmm. Like Death Store. How do they miss that one? The game's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I even went and rebought Gris for the Switch just because I liked it so much on the cell phone. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can play this on TV now. That's awesome. So <laughs> I got it again. I double dipped on Gris. <laughs> um, I did want to say one thing, too. So I know that a lot of people who are into like the current generation PlayStations and Xboxes mm-hmm. give a lot of shit to Nintendo because of the the. Uh, like the hardware re- specs, the resolution and hardware, yeah, that that it's not pumping out like 4K Ultra HD stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, the it, the games max out at 720, but like all of these games I just said are super fun, and you can play them on your cell phone. Like, there's nothing yeah. crazy about them hardware wise. Splatoon 2, which is probably the most graphic intensive game I've seen besides Smash Brothers. Both of these two games are only 720p maximum, but they look fantastic. Like they look yeah. so clean and detailed and like smooth. Like I said, like once you splat everything in the level, everything has like a nice sheen to it, but it's also like not like uniform. Like there will be some parts that are more covered than others. So there's mm-hmm. differences in the gradient of the of the paint, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like this is some really awesome attention to detail. And this is one of the things that Nintendo's always done really well is they give up, yeah. put out really polished game experiences as opposed to just something that's 1080p or whatever higher with like clipping and, you know, things like that. Like this is smooth. The animation is like really well done. So I don't know. I guess maybe all these people at some point will grow out of that. Mm-hmm. Well, it's all about the, the bits, you know. <laughs> Like yeah. that used to be the thing in the nineties. Like, oh, this is sixteen bit. This is thirty two bit. Whatever. But yeah, I, no, it's it's people, all about the game. Yeah, people get super stuck on this idea of like, I want more frames per second, yeah. and like, if it's not four K, like it's this is trash or whatever. It doesn't matter. Play a game that's good and fun, and shut up. <laughs> 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 all right, so that's Splatoon, and what was the other game? Uh, Splatoon two, Cyber Protocol, Manifold Garden, and Cyberhook. Two and games with Cyber, I noticed. <laughs> and they're all available on your Switch. Oh, they are all on the Switch. Okay. Uh, for my week's watch, um, I finally got around to watching a movie that came out at the height of the pandemic. Like, uh-huh. I think it's why it got lost and why I didn't go see it. Um, Monster Hunter. It's starring Mila Djokovic, oh. written or directed by Paul W. S. Anderson, and written by Paul W. S. Anderson. And I know a lot of people give a lot of crap to him for his, you know, for the Resident Evil franchise going on for too long. Uh-huh. Him always putting his wife in the movies. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, but I did not have a problem with the movie. I, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I also have never played Monster Hunter the game, uh, so mm. I didn't have anything. No preconceived notions. preconceived notions. I didn't have any, you know, ideas of what the should be as compared to what I got. Was uh, Tony Jaw in this one? Tony Jaw is in this movie, which is okay. one of the one another one of the big draws for me. Mm. Um, the the idea that 
Mila Djordjevic is the head of a uh, NATO like command group mm-hmm. that is out in the desert looking for the the first command group that went through, and she gets sucked through. Her team gets sucked through a vortex, mm. gets sucked to another dimension, another world, mm. and uh, she sees that there the the people that came before her were also. Um, killed and destroyed their convoy was destroyed mm. uh and then monsters start attacking because you know monster hunter uh that's I, a weird choice I, i've i've never played monster hunter and i've never heard that kind of premise for well i don't games. i don't think it has anything to do with a nato <laughs> command group i think this is just their way of entering and then you get tony ja who's lived who lives in the alternate world and he takes her on because she's a sole survivor and oh. and shows her how to fight these monsters so to speak Mm. um and one of the things i understand is that in the video game as you kill a monster you get to take pieces of that monster and make it part of your armor or your part of your your weapons and stuff like that and that happens Mm -hmm. to her throughout the movie she just keeps like upgrading so to speak or leveling up um and i i just it it very much was reign of fire if anybody remembers mcconaughey and gerard butler in that movie Christian, oh, Bale. Christian Bale yeah. and Christian yeah. Bale. Sorry. That was firefighters <laughs> fighting dragons, right? Mm, they were firefighters. They were. I thought they were. Well, no, everyone becomes a firefighter if you're fighting dragons. <laughs> I swear <laughs> that was the premise. Was like, what do firefighters do if there's dragons? They're gonna fight them. Like, I thought that was, but maybe it's been a long time yeah, since I watched. It's been it. a long time. Unless that's not the premise. His character was a firefighter. Like, it could they were like military. I mean, there, there I, are firefighters. I think everybody there. became military after a certain point. Like, there wasn't that many people left in the world. <laughs> it's true. I, I, I want the anime series that's firefighters fighting dragons. It's not <laughs> but, like, don't have it be dystopian. Just be, like, everyday yeah. world. And you'd be like, oh, that's the firefighter, or that's the dragon alarm. Got to go fight those dragons. <laughs> yes, he is a fire chief. I was right. Yeah, Quinn Damn. Christian Bale is a fire chief. He's a kid when the dragons attack. So. <laughs> he says, as a fire tree, Kryn is responsible for warding off. Like, firefighters become dragon fighters. Like, that's their fire chief. I don't know. It's I think weird. He just, it's he one became, of the reasons why my dad they just, would watch yeah, it. They just made it a <laughs> the title. Like, they gave him a title. Fire chief, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to imagine just his father has just, like, nothing but firefighter movies. There's Backdraft and this oh, one. Yes. <laughs> Backdraft, ladder for pretty much. I refuse to watch with him. <laughs> like, <laughs> that one's sad. Uh, but yes, I enjoyed the movie quite a bit. I could understand why a lot of people wouldn't enjoy the movie. I saw it on Stars, uh, so it is available mm-hmm. there right now. Interestingly, oh. you saw a Mia Jovovich movie on a thing called Stars. Why is that? That's a Resident Evil joke. Hey. Oh, oh hey. yeah. <laughs> Which, side note, I didn't know this till well after, but um, the girl that played young Scarlett Johansson is mm-hmm. Mila Jovovich and Wes Anderson's daughter. Paul or W. S. Anderson. Paul W. S. Anderson. Yeah. That's right. Paul Wes Anderson. <laughs> Paul, Paul Wes Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> There's also Paul Thomas Anderson. So <laughs> Paul Different Thomas director. Wes W. S. Anderson. Yes. Oh, um, I remember a mnemonic that I think. Who was it? Was it Kevin Smith? Somebody said, uh, the best way to remember which one is the, the Anderson you're talking about is that um, one of them should be Paul Weasel Shit Anderson. That's the one that makes the bad movies. And the other one is uh, the one that made Magnolia or whatever. Which I don't care for. I don't care for Paul Thomas Anderson movies. PTA. Uh, I, I like Resident Evil. I like Inv- Event Horizon. So, like... I like yeah. the first the first Mortal Kombat movie. So those are all Paul W. S. Anderson movies, so I don't have a problem with them. Hey, even a broken clock is right twice a day. I mean that's three times right there. <laughs> it's he's going thirty six hour clock. <laughs> okay. Uh there you go. Monster Hunter is on stars. Let's get into talking about Sweet Tooth, episode three. Ooh. Dumb deer shit. Weird deer <laughs> shit, sorry. sorry. Weird deer shit. <laughs> Weird deer shit. <laughs> Tell so. us how you really feel. <laughs> no, that's it. the t- episode's t- title is weird, dear, dear, dear shit. Uh, all right. So, Stephen, <laughs> what did you th- think of the first two episodes? I, you've already went and watched through the whole season, didn't you? You Right? Of Sweet Tooth? God, no. Those are 45 minute long episodes. Oh, I thought you'd watch it before we agreed to t- talk about this show. No, I, um, I have no fondness for the art style of... The comic. comic. So okay. I stayed away. The uh, only thing that was going to make me watch this was us watching it for this. Oh. 
You're welcome. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> so um, why are we I, torturing ourselves? <laughs> because I thought it was going to be cute. <laughs> and I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's, still, it's, it's still cute at times. Not all the time, but still sometimes. It's just sad. It's just sad. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I like parts of the series and everything. Um, I do like that it's a riff on the wolf and cub kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. Um, th- three episodes in, I think if I were watching this on my own, um, if there weren't some big development in the fourth episode, I-, I think I would probably take a long time to come back, and I would I would have stayed away for a little bit after that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. For this particular episode, though, um, there's that group of like teenagers who are all like um what 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 do they call the people in this one that are half animal hybrids hybrids yeah yeah like the the hybrid squad teens you know um i could only think of the elf squad from santa claus (laughs) (laughs) there was something about them where that's all i could imagine the whole time which is funny because they also remind me of the elf squad from the movie that these two didn't like um Artemis something. Artemis Fowl. Fowl. Artemis yeah. Fowl. Oh. yeah. Which also the e- stars the, the same guy. Nonso, Wait, what? Nonso Anonzi. Oh. Oh. That's true. He, he, yeah, he, he, he plays uh, Shaquille O'Neal in this. Right. Uh, and in that one, <laughs> he was the, like, Alfred who was tough. Yeah. Right, right. I don't know. I only got through five seconds of the Artemis Fowl movie <laughs> and turned it off when I saw Artemis surfing and I went, <laughs> no, hey, I'm was, done. <laughs> was it man in Game of Thrones? I don't know if he's in Game of Thrones, but I know he's in Ender's Game. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, he, he looks like the one dude that was like, welcomed her into the city, uh, Daenerys, and turned out he had nothing in his vault. Oh, am oh. I the best? Yes, he was one oh, of the, right, the, the, the the seven people that ruled that one city, right? Yeah, the, whatever they were called, the Seven Fathers, or I don't know. what. Seven it's been a while. I've, I've learned to remember. just repress that show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I believe he was. So, And usually he's playing the same kind of guy, just big, imposing guy. Uh, but yep. this time around, he plays big, imposing guy who also cares for a kid. Kind of. I, I like that <laughs> kind of. when, when they first introduce him, he's like, and my dad's bigger than you. That'll make him bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the fact that in this episode, the the guy selling the train tickets like your shoes, and it's like I'm like, dude, those shoes aren't gonna fit you. <laughs> there's no reason. There's no way you want those shoes. And then he was like, no, I just need the laces. Like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. In in this in this world, I actually this this is a question that I have. What do you think would be the thing that you have currently a lot of that you would have to be the the person people go to for that? In this post-apocalyptic thing. Anxiety. Anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Movie trivia. I am ready. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would do the thing like his dad did, but I wouldn't put, I wouldn't say by father, where he writes all the books and says by father. I would be writing down all of the stories I know. Ah. Oh, yeah, I would too. Which also go, kind yeah. of goes back to Reign of Fire because in, in that movie they're talking, they're like redoing Star Wars and they're changing up yes. the story. And they, 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 <laughs> that was they, the best part, honestly. Yeah. You know what though? That, <laughs> I need to watch that, that was really sold to me by the fact that Christian Bale was doing that like pre-Batman voice because he was supposed to have like scar tissue in his larynx. Right. Mm. So Smoke damage. I like I like that it kind of worked out <laughs> in that way. Um, but yeah, I, so I, I know that I would have like a bunch of random cables. <laughs> <laughs> could use for things i've got a million i have the charger for everything that'd be wiring um, yeah yeah, yeah. Except for i mean this literally the the kids on their s- virtual reality video game is the only yeah. like electricity we've seen in this world so far well i guess why do they the have vibes community like, they, they have the community have vibes. Yeah. has straight up regular electricity yeah that's true I guess I got too used to Pubba and Gus living out in the middle of nowhere. Well, then we also saw the that little like Alexandria village where they looked like they had the regular suburban lives until they yeah, find yeah, one yeah of the that community. Sick. Yeah, I think that's what they were talking about when he said you're not with a company, and I think it's kind of like the idea of like the company store kind of thing where yeah. everyone works to sustain this place mm. like a community like several communities and some are better than others but some are more well everything's a cult really in this place, yeah but. and everything's like self-contained and 
you existing there, like no matter what you do, the most you could ever earn by being there is existing there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I think he meant by company. Mm. Yeah. Right. Possible. See, Mitch's uh, big revelation is there will still be Karens after the apocalypse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there, still be yeah, there has to be. <laughs> Apparently. I mean, she jumped right on throwing that dude under the bus and strapping him down to a chair and burning, burning him alive. Burning him alive. alive. Like, like okay. could you not just like kill him first? Yeah. Like burning him alive yeah. sucks. Wait, so do we know that they burned him alive? I they, mean, they, what, they they away. Him. I thought they were going to suffocate him. I was like, oh my God, are they going to wrap him up in plastic? No, they just <laughs> wrapped him to the chair and then lit the house on fire with him in it. Yeah, I was I was shocked because that's a massive waste of a resource that's probably and not getting I, produced you anymore. You can't just start a house fire and not expect it to jump to other houses, by the way. There <laughs> should have been firefighters, firefighters there. To yeah. stop <laughs> <laughs> Christian Bale showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'd, um okay do we i was gonna say do we think that doug got the virus from addy or is that her name addy right or ronnie ronnie ronnie, ronnie? ronnie? okay yeah <clears throat> the for ronnie. more ronnie talk you well, go and watch love of pages where we talk about <laughs> rebel queen <clears throat> um, but, uh, no i don't think so personally okay. i i think a chunk of them were living with it off of the doctor's uh, shots. Mm -hmm. But since the doctor died, the doctor died, they haven't come back to, because they probably don't know that everybody else is also living with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so mm. they have not come to Dr. Singh to tell him that they need medicine because they're afraid of getting burned alive. I mean, naturally. <laughs> And so they've run out of that medicine. So now you've seen it. It's now coming back. That's fair. Honestly, that, that's a good way to, to think of that one. Hmm. Like they don't know if they can go to the this guy for the same well, secret juice. I mean, because it, it tracks with, um, I'm thinking of the 80s with HIV and AIDS. You know, you mm. just stop telling, you, you don't tell people because if people know you become a, you become a pariah and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, I I don't think that they got it from her. I, I agree that like it's probably something that's just been there, mm -hmm. um, being untreated. Because like everything else in human history, everyone gets mad about something because of a preconceived notion. And they set up their own idea of how this bad thing works every mm -hmm. time. Like it, it's, it's honestly a little bit more surprising that it wasn't like they've gotten to a point where when they burn the guy – they're out like doing like a dance and like, like help, like hoping to curry the favor of the gods so they can take this plague away because people are clearly stupid. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do sing on Ling Sang, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> that was really weird. I was like, oh my god, what is this lady about to do? Should all? I'm like, oh, this is creepier than. <laughs> uh, do we know for sure that there are no new children born that aren't hybrids? Or I don't know. I thought, it's, it's, I thought they said in the second or first episode that every child that is born is a hybrid. So isn't that the, isn't that another big concern? If you're killing all the hybrid kids, yeah. like where are you going to go when that generation doesn't grow up? Yeah. Well, when you don't, yeah, you don't have the next generation. They everybody presumes that we'll find a cure before then. Oh, good luck on that. Yeah, good luck. Plus, the, yeah. Hybrids, <laughs> the hybrids are what is causing the sick. So if you get rid of all the hybrids, the sick will go away. You can start having normal kids. So as long as, as long as there's still hybrids, people are still going to be sick. Correct. As long as people are I, I, sick, there means there's still hybrid out there. Correct. Correlation totally equals causation. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When when they said that the like there were no kids who were being born without the like without being hybrids. All, all I thought was like, okay, so now this is like one really big metaphor for old generations thinking that the new generation of people are dumb and they're going to bring down society, right? Yeah. Yep. Which is very on the like nose. That's, very yeah. on the <laughs> You so, bird people. What's next? <laughs> I also have like, I have a real hard time. My The part that I have a real hard time with this show is how much I see of the, of the current world in it, <laughs> uh, like the Karens and the the you know the stigma of being sick, or even the like 
what's the GI foes basically? Like it seems like the, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the last men, the last men or uh-huh. even the, the people like coming in and dropping off the, the, um, supplies to the doctor's office. It don't seem like real military people. It seems like people are just doing dress up. Yeah. 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 I, so, I think that's what he was before. Um, big man, big man. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he was a football player that then took up with a last man or what, whatever the company that he took up with yep. mm-hmm. to kill hybrids. I, there's a lot. I, one of the most potent things about the entire series was seeing everyone go around without masks. Because, like, they don't know how this, like, we, we don't know how this particular thing is transmitted in this universe. They haven't said that it's airborne or anything like that. But. Mm-hmm. For the first couple episodes, we didn't see anyone going around with masks. In this one, there was a lady who went to the doctor when he's um, he's taken over the practice and everything, and we saw her with um, like a face shield, mm-hmm. the yeah. patient, mm-hmm. uh, as well as that family that we saw that had the masks on. Like, yeah. it took a little bit for us to see that. <laughs> yeah, we saw it in the second episode. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I know. It's just like that should have been what you do in the first wave, like when things well, the, first hit. The first and then wave after that seem to happen overnight though. So I think there was no I, time for the CDC to be like mask mandate. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had questions about this because I think that one of the things that they were doing with the introduction of um, showing the, the actual plague thing first happen. And then the introduction of the lady who's living at the zoo uh-huh. where she was a counselor before. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm wondering it's what we see happen to them when the, the plague stuff is first introduced, the world collapses and everything yeah. is so fucking dramatic and so yeah. instantaneous. Yeah. It, is it that they're trying to show that it was crazy and it happened so suddenly and it didn't actually happen that fast? I have because, no idea. Well, there's a part where like the doctor guy goes outside and like his whole, like the whole town is like yeah. being, and there's all these people outside like gathering people up and everything. And then two helicopters hit each other and stuff like, uh-huh. but then you also and have- then one guy buries a TV that this is all very dramatic and not what people would actually do. <laughs> it depends it how it, it depends how fast. I mean, the virus one is how contagious it is, and two yeah. how virulent it is. I mean, if it kills you that quickly, yeah. I think I, there, yeah. there was that time where the the lady that ends up going to the zoo, she's in her office for mm-hmm. she's in her weeks? office for a while. She's doing yoga. Yeah. Her hair grows. It goes yeah, from being a bob grow. all the way down to her shoulders. Yeah, but they don't like, I mean, tell what, you how long that was, do they? Not, not even for that part, because that part, I get that's a time lapse and everything. You see the pl- the plant get taller, her do mm-hmm. yoga, her hair gets longer. But when when everything comes to a head in her office, she's get, she's counseling that one lady. The emergency the emergency alert system yep. goes off. The president comes on and is like, it's already out there. Uh, and then her, her finger starts twitching. Thing. And then the world goes to shit. <laughs> <laughs> All in like 15 seconds. Yeah, well, It's got to be a dramatization of it. Well, I'm sure it's a bit of a dramatization, but think about last March. We went from nothing to lockdown in less than two weeks. Or, I mean, that, that's how other people feel about it. I was watching that stuff from December. Or, okay. I was too. I was I think watching another, that COVID map from China. Like, oh. Another mm-hmm. good example is is that uh, that airstrike alarm that went off in Hawaii by accident. Like people yeah. started going crazy with that. Like oh, as yeah. soon as the alarm started going off, that's yeah. when people went crazy. I was saying, yes, like you, people didn't kill each other, thankfully. But yeah, I guess what I mean, yes, people were watching it in China, but it was China's problem. Then all of a sudden, it was a problem here, and all of a sudden, it was everywhere because it went unnoticed for so long. Or even yeah, yeah. what what was it? The gas pipe that that broke in what Texas or something like that, and mm-hmm. people started filling up. Plastic bags yeah, with people, yeah. gasoline because they're smart. Yeah. It's just e- even people those in things Florida themselves. were doing it and the Florida governor was like, guys, we have gas. Like, <laughs> we don't get our it's, gas it's just, from there. <laughs> it's just not the space of like two minutes. That's fair. <laughs> That's the thing. So for it's me. dramatized for the TV show, but I don't think it's too dramatized. Like, I don't think it's dramatized for the storytelling. Two, two days, I'll believe. Okay. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> We need a sense of urgency. That's why. Mm. Yeah. So, um, what? Where do you guys see this going after this episode? Well, they're going to join the resistance. <sighs> Viva la resistance. I, I mean, obviously, the the children resistance are going to realize that he, uh, big man, used to be part of a camp or a company, and that's mm-hmm. going to cause tension. But yeah, but and I eventually, Gus is going to die. Defending the camp. <laughs> 
Gus is going to die? Gus is going to die? Yes. I don't think they can get to a second season yeah. without Gus. I don't think they get a... Do they do a second season? No, he's yeah, going to become the king season. of the forest. No, we already got an announcement that they're nope. having a second season. King of the forest. Nope. This, this How weird. King this, of the <laughs> forest. He's, he's Bambi. This show he's is Bambi. Set, yeah. They this set him up to be Bambi. Well, yeah, he, he, the he was the, the deer whisperer. Okay, yeah. then fine. We saw... Then everybody but Gus dies. That's the only other option. I mean, that's also uh, possibility. I, yeah. I don't want him to be the the one who has the cure kind of thing in his blood. Oh, well, he's I want him be. to help the person who has the cure in their blood. Well, obviously he was born before the rest of the hybrid. So yes, I'm not so that. sure he was born as much as cooked up in a lab. I think his mom may have been just a fellow scientist with Pubba. That's fine. Okay. That, that's fair. I, I can see that one. <laughs> see, and that this is the issue. Like you, you put the show out there like this and people are going to uh, watch it just like the other show that we watched with the pandemic. Like, it it only spears on the conspiracy theories that it's all all the it's all made up it's all pandemic bullshit and now <laughs> you got people that are <laughs> fucking not wearing masks and won't take vaccines. Yeah, yeah. I I could see it being where um where are his, those people like, by so, the way? someone? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, but no, like that's someone um, put something else out there that was some kind of counter thing that made it so that people would be born with this other kind of hybrid thing um, to like as a fix for the other virus that was out there. Okay. So this is like people saw the virus coming and they, they made children that are hybrids just like you get sick that. Yeah. They're just like you get Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. you, some families have a second child so that they can donate a kidney. Yep. To their first child. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It makes sense. And, and Jessica, to answer your question, they are all the people who have convinced the rest of the world that the hybrids are causing the sick. So they do exist in this. Show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I was more thinking, like, where's the, like, it, the, the, the people that are like, no, this is Mother Nature, nature's answer to all of our... This is the second like, flood. Mother have, Nature came, made us more animalistic guns. to try to save her world. I think that's where you're going to get with the uh, little resistance, teenage resistance. The ones that yeah. wear <laughs> animal bodies, carcasses to act like an- hybrids. Yes, there you go. That's what I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure for. that's where you're going to get that, that portion of the population. Yeah. I, I do want to say three episodes in Christian Convery plays Gus. I am very impressed with his acting. Like mm-hmm. yeah, he's for a adorable. kid actor. He's great. He's, he's, he's great. He's like that one kid I, from the 90s. What's that kid? Sixth Sense. Haley okay. Joel Osment. There you go. Let's hope he doesn't okay. turn out like Haley Joel Osment. I mean, let's hope so, but I mean, <laughs> he's a child actor, so. <laughs> um, I, I, did, I was confused because there were parts early on uh, where they were in the big man's stash area mm-hmm. in that bus. Yeah. Around that time, he wouldn't say like, like if he if, when he called out for for big man, mm-hmm. he wouldn't say big man. He was like, big man, big man. <laughs> like he said it that way like three times, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> no one would say it this way, sir. <laughs> Except for perhaps a child who has been who's scared, grown up in isolation. Yeah, I mean, but he was the one that spearheaded the name for the guy. It's not like he's like he like it's not, it's not a situation where like my girlfriend's name is Naima, and some people are having a hard time with it because they never heard the name before. Mm-hmm. He said Big Man. He made Big Man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just adding in the extra stress of him having a, a dream, a nightmare. That's fair. Um, I, we also got a. I don't want to be too mean, but like grocery store knockoff of jk simmons in this episode our we thought it was stanley tucci it kind of looked like stanley tucci (laughs) but it's not it is a actor by the name of neil sandalands how to make bad guy bad guy a weird mustache beard combo and some goggles don't forget the bald head bald head bald head bald bald guys are bad guys (laughs) (laughs) except for in fast and the fierce then they're all good guys no, no. Well, in that situation, it's bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fluid. <laughs> John, what did you think of knockoff J.K. Simmons? Uh, is that the guy that's narrating the story? No, no. That's the narrator is James Brolin. This is Neil Sandilands is playing. Brolin? Yeah, okay. he's playing General Abbott, mm-hmm. which we've only up to this point at the end of this episode, we'd only heard about his reign. Abbott's, Abbott's law, law or something. yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Abbott's New um, World. Abbott's America. Abbott's America. This, <laughs> this guy reminded me of Ben Kingsley's Mandarin. <laughs> Mm. We've gotten so many <laughs> comparisons now. <laughs> All bald guys. <laughs> As you stated, Stephen, bald guy, bad guy. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> this is why I'm so scared. <laughs> I can't. I can't be bald. <laughs> <laughs> Big man is also bald. He's not this bad guy. He, um, he just has like a. He has like he has like guy. a little like a fade. Like he's got a little bit on top. <laughs> that, that's a <your> choice. <laughs> I don't know, on a tangent, but like, I cannot say bad guy without thinking of Wreck It Ralph and saying it. Yeah. Oh, bad guy? Always. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Just because you're a movies bad do guy that. does not make you bad, bad guy. guy. <laughs> Set by the other bald guy. <laughs> yeah. He's got a mohawk. <laughs> He's like bad guy. It's, it's an bald. attachment. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, like, like Yondu's thing. Like Yondu? Yeah, okay. Yondu. It's a Yondu yeah. fin. <laughs> That's how he does his like spinning like pile driver. <laughs> 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 now, uh, I did want to touch up on a plot point mm-hmm. when Big Man dressed him up in that football gear to pretend he was a hybrid. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is such a stupid idea. Nobody's going to go for this. So and many then I was like, went oh. for it. Yeah, society <laughs> here apparently has adapted to the point where they're dressing the kids dress up like hybrids for fun. Apparently, like and, they have mm-hmm. masks. You can get like little luchador things on the side of like the the border. Um, it's also like mm-hmm. this is this is literally the scariest thing that you that they can think of for the kids to dress up as for Halloween. Like, come on, it's true. The, I, honestly, I was more surprised we didn't also see people in like like little kids playing with them, like cops and robbers kind of thing, where they're being the last men, right? You know? yeah. yeah, chasing them down, shooting, hunting them. each other. Yeah, yeah. it is mm-hmm. probably something that evolved from rebellion. The teenagers wear it as a rebellion. So then the little kids end up adopting it as a costume. Mm. Okay. Also, I, I I don't know much about deer physiology, but I'm imagining <laughs> a Hellboy scenario where you could probably just file those horns down to like a reasonable there, length. There's um in, inside of antlers. There's actually like blood vessels, if I understand correctly. Yeah, not with that type of deer. Isn't it usually hair, like hardened her hair or fur that's just like grown that way? I mean, that, like that's that's kind of the idea of like, but it's nails. wrapped around things. Oh, yeah, it's more like teeth. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Inside, there's actually yeah. something there because if they break, you see nasty stuff. And antlers on the outside, they grow like what is it? Uh, velvet on the outside of them. Mm-hmm. At times, that'll go away over time, or they'll go and like rub it off on a tree. Yeah, they it can slough it up. Horrifying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like skin. There's like pulling the skin off their yeah. antlers. Uh, okay, well, maybe that's not a good idea, but I was just thinking, yeah. like, hey, like, just maybe break them off, them maybe great. file them down. <laughs> no, they're not. I did they're like the other kid's question. <laughs> in, in the second episode, the kid asked him if he poops pellets. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's question. what I thought when they said weird deer shit. I thought it was going to be playing <laughs> poop, and people would be like, what the hell is this? Like,. <laughs> part i had the I, I i felt so bad for the kid was when he's like stop doing stuff with your ears and i'm like that's that can't be that controllable <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, like imagine if someone was like hey like and while you're going around don't move your eyebrows stop it it's weird <laughs> <laughs> i can't that's a dead giveaway that you're a human <laughs> <laughs> anything else I, john I, um yeah, so I guess I was wrong. It turns out that the the panda mask wearing like skull faced person was not a bad guy, as I was led to believe in the second episode. Could be potentially mm-hmm. the, I guess the saviors in this world. They, they look like lost boys with what they're wearing, but yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's yes. true. I didn't yeah. think about that. I thought they came off like the the hunters in Princess Mononoke, where they they wear <sighs> the pelts and then yeah. paint themselves with the blood, so they, they smell like it. Yeah. Actually, the one that looked like she was wearing like snake gear, like mm-hmm. a snake head, and looks so much like Serpentor from GI Joe. <laughs> I almost, I almost feel like they, they, they might go the other way too with them. Like they're going to be too much of zealots about about it and run run off mm. Sweet Tooth and Big Man. Yeah, probably. She she didn't she didn't try to stay around the kid when the person who was clearly. Like a, like a benevolent force in his life. Yeah. She didn't try to stay around during that either. Also, big man, not a good man. Because he was going to abandon Sweet Tooth on that train and leave him to his, like, whatever happens to you after the train is not my problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's been telling him since the beginning. He's like, I'm not going to stay with you. 
I'm not going yeah, to Colorado. But, yeah. But obviously, okay. Sweet Tooth isn't quite understanding that kind of dynamic. <laughs> He's like, oh, we're cool. Like, you can show me where we need to go. And it's like, no, you're going to go by yourself. But, like, he knows that this isn't going to go end well for him if he leaves him by himself. Like, this just no good outcome could come of this. True. I've been wondering if it's because we, we don't know what that medicine is of his. I, f- I assumed know? it was a painkiller because he rubs his knee where there's a scar. Yeah. I did, we did. That's true. We did see that part. But I don't know if the medicine is is it something that's effective still or is he addicted to something you know is it something that's making his life last is he like is he is he close to death yes yeah, his desperation from the medicine is keeping him from dying or is his desperation from the fact that he's addicted to it is that's he doctor house at. yeah <laughs> <laughs> is it sherlock <laughs> is it sherlock <laughs> but yeah uh, i don't know there's there's a lot of qu- of questions i certainly have about this right now i will say the one question i still have that you guys didn't answer mm. What would you be a dealer of in this world? I, I, oh, I have um, nothing. <laughs> you have a lot of wire. Like I, a yeah, lot of wire. But Steven already is taking care of that. He's I got, I, that, that's, so I got Seattle held the down. Wire. Oh. You, yeah. you, you, the, Yuma, the Yuma wire guy. Okay. Got, I don't know. I don't have. I have snow. I guess I have some board games. I have books. I have a lot of books. Mm-hmm. I, I still have and a food. bunch of toys and Legos. We have a lot of food. Yeah, we have a lot of food. We have a ridiculous amount of food. <laughs> I think I have MREs, actually, now that I think about it. I mean, mm. they're probably expired, but I have them. That's okay. You can you can eat those things well past their expiration date. There's a whole YouTube channel for this. <laughs> we, we have about 15 pounds of flour currently and about 10 pounds of sugar. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of a little bit of Waterworld, where like it's... The world is in such a bad state that if you can have dry paper and dirt, like yeah. that's like high currency. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I can the fact that that dirt was such a big one. It's like all he did was <laughs> dive down and get the dirt. Like yeah. I feel like other yeah. people could have dived down and get the dirt. Well, no, because he's he's the gill man. He can. <laughs> I like, they don't have scuba gear for a long time underwater. Yeah, but there's all those ladies in like Hawaii or whatever who do that, and they stay down for like 17 minutes at a time. Or you do the uh, the barrel thing that pirates used to do to go down. Mm-hmm. Our- See, there's all kinds of ways to do it. Or you go to a place where you know the mountains used to be really high, <laughs> yep. the, just like they do at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, location, location, location. <laughs> that listen, Which- that that's the whole reason I moved to Seattle. <laughs> like, I, I just want to be somewhere that's a little cooler when the global warming really hits. <laughs> See, like except, you, except Yuma is going to be great when that ice age yeah. comes to counteract. <laughs> so I'm I'll, you know, here. I'll, 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 I'll include a map for 2,000 years from now <laughs> for, for my progeny. <laughs> Okay, if, is there anything else that anybody would like to touch on uh, for Sweet Tooth, Episode 3? Any any predictions? Any ideas of what's happening in the next episode? It will again make me sad. Okay. Episode 4. <laughs> episode 4 will make you sad. I will roll my You know what? I, I kind of... When, whenever we start doing some kind of role-playing thing again, mm-hmm. we should adapt it to being like a post-apocalyptic thing. And like have this kind of scenario instead like what kind of stuff do we have on hand what, what's going to be the plan i mean i'm sure uh, there is a, an rpg out there that is this yeah. because they have there an is. rpg for everything mm-hmm. <laughs> they yeah. have to yes but this would be a fun one to implement now like forget magic and <laughs> magic portals and <laughs> no, switching see, their genders i no. don't want to relive my life <laughs> i don't want to yeah. go through this crap <laughs> It's like your pan, your band encounters a group of anti-vaxxers. Uh, what do you do? <laughs> Cry. <laughs> Set them on fire. <laughs> also a solid solution. <laughs> what was yeah. the other thing? If it's anti-vaxxers, if about it's anti-vaxxers personally, like I'll just steer clear and let nature take its course with them in the next three to nine months. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Throw some brats over with the 
catapult into their camp and give them all the bonnet plague. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rats. I thought you said <laughs> brats. Brats. Said bra- just, brats. No, wait, no, 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 he said brats. You throw them bratwurst. Yes. <laughs> well, at first, when I, when I thought he said brats, I was like, he means brats. And then I was like, no, maybe he means like the dolls. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that seems weird. Uh, was, I heard was, brats uh, and I thought he meant infected children. <laughs> I, <thought laughs> I was like, oh it, my God, I'm the daycare teacher in this group. And I was like, why would you catapult children? <laughs> Well, they, they, they're the only ones that fit inside the cup of the catapult. Yeah, it's a small catapult. They don't which, have a lot of resources. Which that does, that does remind me in the episode when the doctor, when Dr. <laughs> Thing was like scavenging through the box. Like, what was he planning on finding at the bottom of that box? It's too small for a like, child. Well, I, so uh, I guess Body this parts. is the question that, that baby, I did have for this. If they're still building Wait, I don't even think a baby could have fit. I mean, like literally a, yeah, a baby a, could fit a, in that a box. fetus. Oh, that well, may so, be what he was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stem cells. I, from this question, I still yeah. don't know why he didn't open the bigger box. The I don't know why we didn't too. get to see that. But. Which looked like it I, had bars. It looked like it was yeah. <laughs> something that you would keep a live animal in. <laughs> I I don't know what they could possibly be juicing out of these kids that would be used in this medicine or anything. Their DNA. It's just bone it's, marrow. It's it's adrenochrome. <laughs> it did say well, bone marrow was, in one of the pictures yeah. in the book, but yeah. I think that was like well, it's. It said a process. It was yeah. like bone marrow, another word. Stripping? Extraction? Extraction? Yeah. I think it was extraction. S- some word. Siphoning? Um, but yeah, like... I, <laughs> Somebody sucking just, it out with a straw. Recycling? <laughs> in, that Basically. Si- in that situation, like, even even bone marrow and everything, like, there's, there's only so much that you can get from that, that it would be weird for them to have something that they produce from there like white blood cells or whatever that's what we produce in, in it's there. adrenochrome well it's a treatment not a cure oh. remember yeah, i guess it's true yeah that's why it's temporary that's why it's a month to it. month um and i imagine it is probably their bone marrow or blood or, or stem cells since they can't catch the sick so you're using their immune system which is what to is boost created yours. in the bone marrow i don't think you, you don't have there's no you don't have like stem cells left over after you're formed there are stem cells in yeah. your bone, yeah. mar- bone marrow because the stem cells is what makes your new your body change your your new cells so stem cells make white blood cells and red blood cells, cells in your bone marrow i only know that because i'm watching the anime cells at work again and that's a good <laughs> show that's a good show i just watched the episode where they talk about it and they say the stem cell chooses which cell will be what and so, that's and that's why you do bone marrow transplants to treat mm-hmm. cancers frequently because that's how you generate new clean cells yeah they're just like i think they're harder mm-hmm. to harvest than from stem cells from a fetus though absolutely yeah so 100 <laughs> percent. yeah well, yeah because I mean, yeah, as a fetus yeah. like you are you're, stem you're cells. nothing but stem cells <laughs> And you need so many too. Like, yeah. You gotta- yeah. Okay. So if you have an opinion on Sweet Tooth or any of the other shows we talked about today, reach out. You can find me on Twitter. I am at Mitchipedia GEM. GEM stands for Geek Elite Media. Steve, where can people find you online? I'm, I'm taking a break from the internet right now. Um, feel free to just come over to my website, peppermintgentleman.com. View some of my work if you want. Um, but I'm, I'm not on the social medias at the moment. Mm. Jessica? You can find me on Twitter as JM Bailey Writes. John? I am on Twitter at Magic Bollocks. No added, like, if you want to talk to me about something? Mm. <laughs> yeah, not today. Okay. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> talks to me, sp- anyways. Like, why even throw out an invitation? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody talk go to talk Spartan. to John. No, everybody talk <laughs> to John. <laughs> Are you seeing more hashtags? Good deals? <laughs> I always forget to hashtag. <laughs> hashtag good deals pandemic. On- no, wow. <laughs> They're all type of people. No. But okay. <laughs> no, don't do that. That's not good for your mental health, How John. About hashtag Splatoon? How about that? There we go. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, what did, where can people find you? You can find me with the rest of Geek Elite Media at Geek Elite Media on our Facebook page forward slash Geek Elite Media. Check out our website, geekleetmedia.com, for archived episodes of this podcast and other podcasts on our network. And whatever podcast you use to listen to us, please rate and review us. It helps spread the word of our network. But until next time, this is the Geeks Watch on the Geek Elite Media Network saying, always remember to geek Geek out. out. This concludes our broadcast. Peace.